we have two particles, A and B. We're given their masses, so I'll draw on the weights. A has a weight of 5 mg, and K has a weight of kmg. I'll draw the tensions as well, T and T. We're told our modeling assumptions, it's connected by a light and extensible string, which passes over a smooth light fixed pulley. It's held at rest, the string is vertical, A and B are the same height above the ground. The system is released from rest, and it descends and A descends with an acceleration of 1 over 4g. So the acceleration of A is 1 over 4g, and therefore the acceleration of B upwards would also be 1 over 4g. And there is our force diagram. So we're trying to show for part A that the tension in the string as A descends is 15 over 4 mg. So I'm going to write out two equations of motion for A and B. For A, the overall force is downwards. So then 5 mg minus T, that will be the resultant downwards force. And that will then be equal to ma. 5m is the mass of A times the acceleration. Call that equation 1. And then for B, the resultant force is upwards. So that will be T minus kmg. That will be the overall upwards force. And that will be equal to ma for B. B's mass is km. And there is our second equation. So we're trying to show that the tension in the string is this. We actually have the acceleration, so I'm going to change both of these a's to 1 over 4 g. And if you look at equation 1, we can rearrange that for t. I'll bring the t to the right-hand side, so now it's by itself. I'll bring the 5 times a quarter mg to the left. That becomes minus. So this will be 5 mg minus 5 over 4 mg. And 5 minus 5 over 4 will end up being 15 over 4. That's part A. And for part B, we're trying to work out what K is. So we can now use equation 2 with the tension that we've worked out. 15 over 4 mg minus kmg is equal to this, which I'll write as a quarter kmg. So to start with, I'm going to cancel out all the mg's. So divide everything by mg. We lose an mg from each term. This then becomes 15 over 4 minus k is equal to a quarter k. And then I'm going to times the entire equation by 4. So 15 minus 4k is equal to k. Bring the 4k over. We get 5k is equal to 15 and k will then be equal to 3. For part c, state how you've used the information that the pulley is smooth. So I've considered the tension on both sides of the string to be the same, t, t. That would only be the case if the pulley is smooth. If the pulley had friction in it, then if I apply a force in this part of the wire, so if I pull down that wire, and the pulley had a lot of friction in it, that force will not carry through to the other side of the string. Some of that force will be opposed by the friction in the pulley. But if the pulley is very smooth, whatever force I apply on the left-hand side will carry through to the right-hand side. There wouldn't be a friction force opposing it inside the pulley. And for the final part, part D, this is where the question starts to get difficult. So it says, after descending for 1.2 seconds, A reaches the plane, it's brought to rest, and then we're told that B does not reach the pulley. We're trying to find out the greatest height reached by B above the plane. So we're going to split this up into two stages. And I'll explain why. The first stage will be when A hits the ground. So A travels, it travels some distance towards the ground and hits it, that's going to be stage one. The acceleration in that stage will be a quarter g. So when A hits the ground, B still has some momentum. It will then travel upwards with that momentum and get to a certain height before it then falls back down. When A hits the ground, it's no longer falling, so the string then goes slack. 
B still has some speed, it still has velocity. Whatever speed that A hit the ground with, that will be the speed that B has at that instant. So it's not going to stop straight away, it will keep moving up and then decelerate until it eventually stops. The acceleration changes. So to begin with, the acceleration of the two masses is a quarter g. But as soon as A hits the ground, now the string goes slack. And if there's no more tension acting on B, the only force acting on B is its weight. And if an object only experiences its weight force, then the acceleration on the object will be g, 9.8. And that's why it slows down. The acceleration on B will then be downwards 9.8 meters per second squared. It will then slow down and eventually come to rest. So the reason we have to split it up into two stages is because we have different accelerations. Suva equations can only be used when you have uniform acceleration. Our acceleration changes. It's a quarter g to begin with. And then for object b, it'll be 9.8. So what we should do is we should have our first stage of the journey being when a travels down and hits the ground and that'll be one acceleration. And then we can model that scenario with one set of Suva equations. And the second stage will be when, after A hits the ground, B travels up with its own momentum and eventually comes to rest. And in that scenario, the acceleration will be a different constant value of 9.8 downwards. Now, if that doesn't really make sense, don't worry, we're gonna break this down and run through the math of everything. And then hopefully it'll be a bit clearer. So let's start with stage one. So stage one, remember, is when A travels to the ground and then hits it. So let's write out what SUVAC quantities that we know. So we're told the time. The time is 1.2 seconds. That's how long it takes to hit the floor. We know the acceleration is a quarter G. It's released from rest, so we know what the initial speed is, zero. And if we work out what V is, we then have the initial speed of B for stage two. We're trying to work out in this question the greatest height reached by B above the plane. So whatever distance that A falls down by, that's how high A and B are off the ground. And that will be then how high B travels in stage one. So we need to work out this as well. I'm gonna call it X. I'll draw that on the diagram so you can see what that would be. So X would be this distance here. So A travels a distance of X downwards, hits the ground, and in that time, B will travel up by the exact same distance. So the exact same distance will be traveled by B upwards. So B will then end up here, and A will end up down there, and after stage one, B will be a total distance of two X above the ground. Okay, so with the SUVAC quantities that we have, let's work out what S and V are. I'm gonna start with V. V is equal to U plus AT. U is zero. A is a quarter G times by T. And this will give us 2.94 meters per second. Now let's work out distance x. So we can use the equation s is equal to ut plus half at squared. So s is x, u is zero, so this whole term would be zero. So that's equal to half at squared, half a t squared. Type this in, and we end up with 1.764 meters. Okay, so we've got everything from stage one. Now let's go on to stage two. So stage two is after A has hit the ground and then B has a velocity. The velocity of B, the initial velocity of B for this stage will be the final velocity of A in stage one. Whatever speed that A is moving at when it hits the ground will be the speed of B at that same instant but the velocity of B will just be upwards, the velocity of A will be downwards. The distance is what we're trying to work out. 
Now, we asked, we asked them the question to work out the greatest height reached by B above the plane. Once B has reached its greatest height, its speed will be zero. So the final velocity for this stage would be zero. And remember we were saying that when A hits the ground, then B continues to move upwards. The string then goes slack. There's no more tension in the string. The only force on B will then be its weight. And if an object only experiences its weight force and no other forces, its acceleration would be 9.8. So the acceleration would be 9.8, but it would be negative because the object is moving upwards. I'm defining the upwards direction to be positive. That's an arbitrary choice. I could say downwards is positive as well. But I just have to define a direction and then stick with it. So I'm saying the upwards direction is positive. So my initial velocity is upwards. Therefore, it is positive. But the acceleration acts downwards. So that should be negative. And then we can finally, with these quantities, work out what S is. So we can use the equation that links these four quantities together, the three that we know and the one that we want to work out, is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. v is 0, u squared is 2.94 squared, plus 2as plus 2as. So expanding this out, 0 is equal to 8.6436 minus 19.6s. I'll bring this to the left. 19.6s is equal to 8.6436. And then s is equal to this number, 8.6, divided by the 19.6, and that is 0 0.441. Okay, so this isn't our final answer. We want to work out the greatest height reached by B above the plane. So if I go back to my diagram, when A hit the floor, B ended up here. It was a distance of 2x above the ground. And then it moves upwards a further distance of what I called S for stage 2. And we worked out S to be 0 0.441. So the total distance of B above the ground would be 2x plus s, 2 lots of 1.764 plus 0 0.441, and that will be 3.969 meters, which is our final answer.